Hey everybody, Dan Schinder here at the NAMM Show 2020 at the Drum Talk TV booth with Jason Hartless, the drummer for Ted Nugent. How are you? Uh, doing fantastic, man. It's just uh, normal craziness here at NAMM. Absolutely, and I'm sorry. I botched up your introduction. Ted Nugent is your guitar player is what I meant to say. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you're, you've gotten very close to Ted. You're not just a working drummer with him, but... He's like, how, where would you place him in the relationship in your life? Well, it's fantastic. You know, he's one of the best bosses to work for and phenomenal guy to be, you know, in presence with. And, like, he took me hunting back in October for the first time ever. So, you know, there was also that really, really great experience, you know, to uh, to have that with him. And we, we had an opportunity to see you play in Phoenix. Seems like two months ago, but I think that was like May or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah like six, seven, eight months ago. Well, nine months ago. And we got, he came back and got, you know, we spoke to him. He's, I've seen interviews. I've, I've seen so many different things. I think he's one of the nicest guys in the business and, and the most genuine. And I love him for being just who he is and what you see is what you get. And I love that. Absolutely. You know, the media portrays him in one thing, but really he, he's one of the best guys in the world. His whole family has embraced. My family is his family. It's just uh, absolutely phenomenal. Funny thing, when we were in the dress, Jason's dressing room, it was me, my wife, who happens to be black, and maybe three other people. The rest of us are white. And Ted walks in, he puts his arm around her and says, I'm feeling a little awkward being the only black guy in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So tell us, encapsulate the last tour, which, again, we were fortunate enough to see. A great show. If you're a Ted Nugent fan from way back in the 70s, like I was when I was a kid, so much lives up to everything. I saw the video of him playing at Cal Jam way back when. He's still Ted freaking Nugent, you know? Encapsulate the tour for us. Oh, I was phenomenal. You know, every single year we go out during the summer and, you know, we're just go hard all summer long. So, you know, we usually do about eight weeks straight and we're playing almost every single night. So it's a very grueling tour, but it's just it's such a great tour to be a part of. Great crew, great songs, you know, and every year we... The difference between playing with Ted and a lot of other artists is, you know, there's no clicks, there's no backing tracks, and honestly, he improvises things every single night. You know, about 70% of the set... It's fresh. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he'll throw out songs in the middle of the set that we might haven't played in two years. You know, so it keeps me and the bass player on our toes, and we're a three-piece. So, super old school, you know, uh, uh, it allows us our musicianship to kind of expand a little bit more within these classic, you know, iconic songs. You know, I have to admit, when I first heard, we talk, talked about it being a three-piece, I was a little, huh. You know, and I'm, try, I'm thinking through Ted's catalog, and I'm thinking, you know, what's that going to be like? And I, not that I would ever think he would do anything watered down, but it sounded like stuff from over here that was now put over here, and I didn't know how to identify with that. It was, I'm going to say it, it was the shit, okay, really. I don't talk like that on this show, but... The three-piece arrangements of these songs let those songs breathe, let everybody's playing come through. It was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, you, you look at Cream, The Who, Mountain, all these bands that had drums, bass, guitar, and that's it, that were these iconic power trios. Even though The Who had a singer, I still consider it a power trio because the way that the arrangement of these songs were and the music shouldn't ship that happened within these songs it's just something that doesn't happen anymore, you know. So to be in it, being that that uh, you know band like Ted Nugent, that we're able to still capture that old school vibe, it's just absolutely phenomenal. That's cool. At a very young age, he's accomplished so much. Playing with Ted Nugent, how long have you been with Ted? This uh, 2020 will be my fifth year. And he's got a record label, and possibly your most amazing accomplishment, a 4,500 piece. Lego castle of the Disney castle. <laughs> yeah. It's like this tall, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's probably about probably about that tall. Yeah, it looks like 4,500 people. What do you do if you lose one? I, should, I, I guess can't. it's undone. I guess I'm screwed. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I introduced you to my son, Alex, our photographer, who's been in a Lego. He's 29. He's been in a Lego since he was a little boy. I always love Lego. When have you been into it since you were a little kid? Actually, no. Uh, literally, the only reason I did is because I'm a big Disney Parks fan. You know, that's one of my hobbies is you know going to Disney Parks, and you know I was at Disneyland for two days before I started here. You know, so it's 
always been one of my passions. And when Lego came out with that set, it was just kind of like, I got to do it. <laughs> That's cool. Did you see the picture? I think I sent you the picture of the Lego soldier. I saw at a store in Hong Kong. Yeah. So what's your next Lego challenge? <laughs> I have no idea. Life size of Ted. <laughs> yeah, right. With the hollow body and everything. Hollow body and a rifle on his back. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Are you teaching? Yeah, yeah. You know, when I'm when I'm off off tour, you know, it's it's uh, honestly I, I'm more busy when I'm home than I am when I'm on tour. You know, because I you know run a record label. You're on tour, you don't have time. For it. Exactly. You know, I'm a managing partner in a record label. I'm also, you know, still studying at Berkeley College of Music. I graduate in May with my bachelor's. That I'm starting my master's instantly in music business. So, on top of that, it just goes crazy. But. In between all that, I teach, you know, I'm a music director at a school of rock outside of Detroit. So, you know, that keeps me busy. And it's great to, you know, teach these young, inspiring young musicians to the right way to be able to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Jason, thanks for taking time out of your hectic schedule, the madness that goes on here at the NAMM show. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining Jason Hartless and myself, Dan Schindler, here on Drum Talk TV. We'll be back with more.